Okay, students, so we are moving on to uh, the measures of variation. Um, so we're going to start off by comparing two data sets for quizzes that are taken in a Bio 105 course. So the first quiz has uh, the following scores. It turns out that the mean for that data set is 8. So that's a Monday, Wednesday, Bio 105 class. Now for the Tuesday, Thursday, Bio 105 class, um, there's a little bit more students in that class. These are the scores. The mean is also late. So what we want to do is we want to compare what's called the spread of the data set. How spread out are the data values from the mean for each example? To, to accomplish this, we need to employ what are called the measures of variation. So the measures of variation help um, determine the spread of a data set, typically from the mean. And so before we look at the measures, let's just use a dot plot to graph both data sets and then compare the two data sets. So if we plot all the values for both data sets using a dot plot, immediately we can see, and we're just going to compare the means, we can see that one data set, the sec for the Tuesday Thursday class is more spread out. It has a very small value and a very large value. Whereas um, uh, the Monday Wednesday class is more compact. More of the values are centered around the mean. Um, and um, so what a statistician would do at that stage is they would compare the two data types and then they would try to find out the reasons why. Is it because um, the Monday Wednesday class, are they, um, do they better prepare for quizzes? Uh, were the two assessments of equal value or that they have the same topics covered. So there's uh, many different ways of analyzing the data and trying to come up with a conclusion uh, for the reasons why. But uh, statisticians like to use the spread of the data to make comparisons. And the reason that this is accomplished, let me just write this up here, is because um, these measures the measures of variation help to manage quality. So you can compare um, products that are being produced. If there's a wide range in the quality, then something might be, there might be an error or a malfunction in the control process that has to be uh, rectified. Um, it also manages um, risk. So measures of variation are, deter are used to determine the risk of particular types of investments and measures consistency. So you would use, a statistician would use the data values or, or the measures of variation to help improve consistency of particular types of items that are being produced or of a, a machine that is manufacturing different types of products. Using statistics, uh, one would try to improve not only the quality, but the consistency of the products that are being uh, uh, developed. Okay, so we're, now let's turn to the three measures. So for each of these data sets, we will calculate the three measures of variation. So we'll just run through them. The first measure we're familiar with, range, that's the highest value minus the lowest value. That's kind of the crudest of the three measurements. Then we have the variance. The variance is denoted as S squared, and it computes the average of the square distance between each data value and the mean. 
And we will be using the following formula to compute the variance. Uh, just remember, this notation is called sigma. So n represents the number of data values. Sigma is a sum. So it's the sum of all the squared data values minus the sum of all the data values quantity squared divided by n times n minus 1. And we will need to compute the variance because that will be used to compute standard deviation. The standard deviation is the square root of the variance. And we denote the standard deviation using s. And it measures the spread of each data value from the mean. So remember, the larger the spread, the more spread out your data values will be. The smaller, the more compact your data values will be from the mean. Um, just to kind of take a look at our data sets again to make the comparisons, we can see that this data set should have a smaller standard deviation than this data set, and we'll verify that later. So let's go through the process. So we'll work with the first data set, and we, we will calculate the range. So the range is very simple to compute, just 10 minus 5 is 5. Now the, to calculate the variance, the first step is what I would do is organize the data. Let's just bring this down a little bit here. The first step would be to um, organize the data into a table with two columns. The first column, we list our data values. So you list your data values in the first column. Then we square each data value in a second column. And the sum of the first column, so now we find the sum of the first column, that's 48. And then we find the sum of the second column, that's 406. N is just the number of data values, so we have six data values. We then insert uh, these sums and N into our formula. So we have N is 6 times the sum of the X squared column, 406 minus the sum of the x column, 48 squared, all divided by 6 times 6 minus 1. We further our computations. Uh, so our numerator is 2,436 minus 2,304, all over 6 times 5. We have 132 over 30, which uh, will round to the tenths as 4.4. That is the variance. But of the three measures, the most important will be standard deviation, S. And to calculate standard deviation, we just calculate the square root of 4.4, and that gives us 2.1. Now, we have a couple of other examples uh, for people to try. I would just like to mention at this stage that most of these problems can be done using a basic scientific calculator. So I did list out all the steps to do it by hand, but I would recommend that uh, people learn how to compute these values using their calculators. And I've made a couple of videos that show people the process for, for uh, some of the more standard scientific calculators. All right, let's continue and uh, we'll bypass that part. Now we're going to look at computing the variance and standard deviation for group data. Okay, so if we're, remember, group data, we have all our values placed into specific groups, whereas with raw data, the values are listed out. So the process that we just reviewed is for raw data. Now we have to examine the process for group data. So typically with group data, we have a class, we have a frequency, we will need to add three columns to this table. We need to add the midpoint column, frequency times midpoint column, uh, or midpoint value, and frequency times the midpoint squared. And once we add these columns, we will find the sums of the frequency column and the sums of the last two columns. And we will insert those values into our variance formula. 
and compute the variance. Finally, we take the square root of the variance to get the standard deviation. So let's go through an example. There's something also called the modal class I just want to mention. So the modal class is the class with the highest frequency. So we'd also like to find the modal class. So the modal class is the class with the highest frequency. So for our example, uh, we will typically be given some classes, frequencies. I think these are class boundaries actually, so let's put, it doesn't matter. Uh, you, you can work with classes or class boundaries. So step one is we have to add the midpoints. So to find the midpoints, you add 5.5 to 10.5, that's 16. Divide by 2, you get 8. We could repeat that process for all the other class limits. Or if we notice, the class width is 5. So we just have to add 5 to 8 to get 13. And then 5 to 13 to get 18, and so on. And we can quit rapidly generate all the other midpoints. Our next column is the frequency times midpoint column. So what that means is we multiply each frequency with the corresponding midpoint. 1 times 8 is 8, 2 times 13 is 26, 3 times 18 is 54, etc. Finally, the last column is F times the midpoint squared. So be very careful here. It doesn't mean to square the F times XM column. Only XM is squared. So there's two ways of going about this. One way is to square each midpoint and then multiply it with the frequency. So 8 squared is 64. 64 times 1 is 64. So that's one way of computing this last column. Another method is to simply multiply the midpoint column with the F times midpoint column, because that means only the XMs will be squared. So 8 times 8 is 64. 13 times 26, 338. 18 times 54, 972, and so on. Okay. So our next step will be to um, to find the sum of the frequency column. That's our n, so there's 20 values, and the sum of the last two columns, 490 and 13,310. So first we can just mention the modal class is the class with the highest frequency. 5 is the highest frequency, so our modal class is 20.5 <coughs> to 25.5. Now we compute our variance, so n is 20. f times xm squared, the sum is 13,310. f times xm is 490 squared over 20 times 20 minus 1. <coughs> Perform our calculations. The variance is 68.68. Finally, we calculate the standard deviation. Square root of the variance is 8.29. And that's how we compute the, the variance and standard deviation for group data. Modal class, we just look for the class or classes if, if you have two modal classes with the highest frequencies. So we have a couple of examples for people to try, and then the answers are at the back of the document. Thank you. Have a good day.